Hey guys, it's Tobin. Today we're going to talk about one of the worst things in the entire world, which is printing from the web. And I maintain a list of things which I think are just complete horseshit. Uh, and when I look at this list from time to time, first it's a remarkably long list, but second, printing from the web is always on it near the top. I hate the entire idea of it. The idea in 2014, we're going to take what's on our screen and uh, etch it into pressed tree bits. It just drives me nuts. But people still like to print stuff out. So for the dashboard, I started making a report. Uh, I really wanted to make it so it's, whenever I have to do a print thing, I try to make it cool like it could serve as just a standalone web page. That way I don't feel like so much I should kill myself. And in this case, I made a report that uh, is very much standalone. It's standalone from the Quality Life dashboard in that you can get to it without going through the dashboard at all. You can pass it in neighborhoods and it'll just make your report. And it's very nice and visually appealing. And it is a cool kind of, hey, here's a profile of your community or communities you picked out. So I wanted to make it kind of neat and still be able to function as a print thing. And I think I did that in a way that is better than I've done that before. So I thought I'd share it. Now, normally what I do when I make a print page is I try to take my actual application and just apply some print CSS styling and just make it acceptable so it prints. So I'm not having to maintain like two different sets of HTML and JavaScript to, to do all this stuff. Because I make, when I make single page applications, I want it to be just one page. But in this case, if you're making something to print that is substantially different from the application, which you might well want to do, it's, you really can't get away with that. So here I made a whole different page and styled it up accordingly. So we're going to talk about that, what I did, and a little bit about print styling on the web in general, because it's tricky. So let's take a look. Let's do things. Let's see. First, how to do print styling. Uh, when you have CSS, it has a media type that you have either specified or not specified, which means it applies to everything. The media type, there's a lot of different values you can use. Generally, the ones you see will be screen and print. And then there's several different ones that uh, no one really uses. And you can specify it in a couple ways. You can have a print style. I don't know if you can see this. When you load the CSS in your, in your link tag, there's a property for media and you can specify print. Uh, and if you don't specify it, just applies it to everything, screen print, what have you. Uh, that's the way to do it. It's generally not the way you should do it. You should have all your CSS on one file to minimize uh, minimize resource requests. As if you don't do that, you just end up a bunch of resource requests. It's bad for performance and page load and everything else in the world. So this generally isn't the way you want to do it. Because when you do it this way, it's not going to not fetch that CSS file until you decide you want to print it's always going to fetch it and just apply it if you happen to print. A better way is to put it right in your regular CSS. You can specify media types there. This at media, uh, I don't even know what to call it, directive maybe, and give it a style. And what I generally do is just have all my styles there. And then down at the bottom, I'll have this at media print along with a couple of at media if the browser's only this size to do X, Y, and Z. And basically at media print, and you can put your, 
print, you're basically applying some styles and probably overriding stuff that you would do for your screen. And here's how that looks in the dashboard itself. This is the report I made in, for the dashboard. It's kind of a rough draft at this point. Uh, it's got a map and text. You notice each page is, this is kind of styled like the print preview page you'll see in your browser. It's got that gray background with each page kind of box shadowed a little bit to make it stand off. So at some point or another, this is going to be meaningful text in theory. A map of the neighborhoods we're looking at, some basic front page stats. And then each subcategory that we have, we're going to have a page for it and a table with the data and some kind of meaningful chart. Here I've just stubbed in charts the data is actually showing up, and on and on for each page. And it's styled in such a way that when you go to print, it's exactly, you notice this print preview page looks exactly like what the actual page looks like. Scroll down and each thing is kind of there exactly the way it was before. Now, how do we do that? Let's look at code. First, the fun bit of CSS. Let me bump this up a bit. This is Adam, the editor from GitHub, which I've been using full time for a while now. It's, it's still, you know, alpha, beta, preview, releasey. Um, I noticed that when I install it through the Arch user repository, there's like a new version every day almost. So it's under rapid development, but it's very stable. It's very good. And there are a lot of extensions to do all your JS hints and all the stuff you need to do in your editor. So I like. Here's how we are doing this fancy stuff. We're giving it a page background of the good old nice gray pound triple C. That's setting up this whole page background. And in the HTML, up, up, up. we have a type, a class called page and a page is this white container here that we have that is basically a page. Now how we style that is we're giving it a max width and this is kind of important. It's using bootstrap because bootstrap is awesome. Uh, but Bootstrap has its whole responsive gig, which is very nice, but it can be kind of misleading on a print page. So what we're doing is we're setting a max width for that page that will make it more roughly print size in the default page load. So normally it would be a, a, uh, a step wider by default when you have a big browser window here, but by setting that page max size, it's scrunching it down and forcing it down to about a print size. The second thing we're doing, well, second, third, fourth, we're applying some padding and margin. So each page is offset from the other. And within each page, there's a slight bit of padding. So everything's not just slammed straight up to the end of that end of that uh, page area. So it gives it a page type appearance in a regular browser window. So we're applying a little padding and margin. Now for a print specific thing, which is really awesome, there's a CSS, uh, I never know the right word to call things. There's classes and properties and attributes and directives and uh, anyway, there's this thing called page break after and it's supported in all the all the browsers even internet explorer and what that says is after that particular class of page force a page break for printing and that is what makes it print really nice so each page shows up on one page in the print preview and we want to for the very last of this class page just say page break after avoid because we don't want an extra up blank page on the end for that last page. That gives you the page breaks you need. That's really cool. Another thing we're doing, 
is we're setting a minimum height of 842 pixels. We want to make visually on the page, you know, some of these don't go nearly to the bottom, but they have a roughly page height in pixels. It's actually a little bit short of what a printed page would be. And we're setting it as a min height, just in case things roll over what a regular page is going to be. We're also applying a little bit of spacing to the row class in uh, Bootstrap. So things are, you know, this stuff isn't slap up against the row on top of it. So that's very, very basic and easy. We're styling a page that looks like a print page. Another thing we're doing is a, a compound box shadow. Uh, some people don't, don't know, but you can, you can string box shadows together. So here we have two different box shadows. One is a very slight, no uh, pushing left or right box shadow that gives it this kind of outline appearance. There is not an outline on this page element. There's like, there's not a line around it. It's just having that tiny box shadow gives it a tiny offset. And then we have a second box shadow that is this kind of, we're doing this negative 10 uh, scrunch in. So it gives it this kind of thing where it's, you know, diagonally goes in at the bottom to give it kind of a look. We're hovering over the background like a real piece of paper would. I know, cheesy. I know box shadows are bad for uh, frame rate, but it's pretty. That's how we set up the page. Now, at the very bottom of this tiny CSS file I have doing all this, we have our media page print. This is will only apply when you go to print. We're taking the margin and padding between those pages that we're applying here as a visual style on the screen, and we're getting rid of those. We're taking the box shadow away. And that means if we saw this on the screen, it would, uh, uh, see if we can just see what that looks like. So this would apply all the time. You see how it runs all together? This is what it looks like to the printer when it goes to print. The margins are gone, so it's pressed up against the edges and there's no pretty offsetting of the pages. So that's what the printer sees. On the screen, It sees this so it's very visually pleasing for the user. The idea here is we have a print style report that looks pretty enough to use as a web page. And you can link to it as a web page, but you can also print it and it will reformat itself just for printing. What does the HTML like look like, you say? Okay. Basically, we have a div with class of page for each page we want and then the contents of that page, and that's it. So we have a div class of page, and within that we have our bootstrap rows, and within each row we have our column, uh, column widths. Pro tip, uh, if you have to use the column uh, sizing of excess extra small, the reason is for a print width, when Bootstrap sees that, if it's not extra small, it's going to take those columns and put them one under the other. It's going to hit a threshold point where it's going to stack rather than leave stuff side by side. And we've styled this specifically to be side by side. So you need to use column class with extra small for this. Second pro tip, when you are styling your leaflet map, uh, and here's our leaflet map for those four neighborhoods. Uh, make sure you make the size of that map what it's going to be when it prints. If you have your leaflet map in a column that gets scrunched when it goes to print, it resizes the page to a smaller size, the center of that map will change. And it will know the center of the map you have on your screen won't be the center when you go to print and you will hate life. So make sure the map is the size it will be when it prints. And that way your center will, will stay the same. Now, for some styling for this kind of stuff and using data attributes smartly. What I'm doing for each place you see a number and for these tables, 
they have a, a variety of classes. For things that have the number, it has this data metric property and the metric it needs. And this is the name, uh, if you've looked at any of the uh, quality of life stuff, this is what you named that metric CSV file and metadata file. It has this data change column with the name of the metric you want there. And that's, that's this arrow and the data average, which is like the, uh, your neighborhood average for your study area as a, a reference point. By having this data attribute or property, whatever, I never know what to call things. And I know that makes me sound stupid, but I'm too lazy to look it up and remember what these things are. We're gonna call it property. This data property lets you do really simple JavaScript. So legend, calc, data, blah, 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 create charts. We go create data. You can just look in jQuery for anything with that data metric property. And you know each one of those, you want to fill in that data. So we say for each one, we get that element and we plop the data in. Same thing for data change and same thing for data average. You see, just with this tiny bit of JavaScript, we're populating all of that stuff. For charts, and the only thing I've done so far is a donut chart, I'm going to make a line chart and a bar chart too for, for reference once we figure out what those are going to be. Uh, it's using chart chart.js. So the reason why I'm doing that instead of D3 is these are non-interactive charts and in, we're going to have a lot of charts. And SVG is just kind of slow in the browser. It's not like, oh my God, it's so slow. But if you're drawing a bunch of charts and they're not going to be interactive or updated on the fly, it is much more efficient for the browser to do it as a low level bitmap, which is what Chart.js does. It does it as Canvas, which in the browser renders as a bitmap and, and is extraordinarily fast. Using Chart.js that for this donut chart, which I have everywhere now, but it's probably only going to be in one or two places. And I'll appraise it with different charts later. You'll see this class donut chart for the canvas and a legend below it. And you'll see it has this data.chart property and the different metrics that I want to be in that in this donut chart. So then whenever wherever I have this class donut chart, I can again go into report.js and say, wherever you see this one for each one, we're going to build our data from those metrics and we're going to launch our chart and make our legend. And it's just that simple. This little bit of code will handle any time I want to make a donut chart. And I will make little blocks like this for a bar chart and a line chart when we figure out what we're going to show for this. So the idea is each, each uh, metric subcategory will have a chart or two if we can fit that is specific to that particular thing. And this is how this whole report page works. It's very simple and straightforward, um, but it visually is very, very good. I haven't done a report that's this pretty before. The old dashboard did PDFs and PDFs uh, uh, kind of hate them especially rendering them for a, a website. It's just no fun whatsoever because it's a print format and you have to exactly place everything and there's no real flow if things aren't done. I was using PHP and FPDF for that the last go around. And that's the, you know, easiest way. FPDF is the easiest way I find to make PDFs and it still sucks. So. We decided to make this more functional and to make it a, a page you can both print and use as a page to here, here's a profile of my community area. We did it this way. I'm using the royal we. I did it this way and uh, no one yelled at me so we are going to keep it this way. That's how this works. That's a little bit about print styling and how to set your media type and apply styles forthwith there. So do it. If you're, if you're doing this on uh, your own version of the dashboard, 
And by the way, guys, you guys are doing great. I've got a lot of emails and, and questions about code and, and change suggestions from people all over the place. Wow, uh, you guys are, are doing fantastic with this. Um, one thing about this print page is that there's not a great way to genericize this for everyone because everyone's data is going to be different. Everyone's what they want to see in a chart would be different. Uh, what they want to say about a subcategory or about the report is going to be different. So it's not going to automagically automag work for you. Uh, what you need to do is uh, format it. Basically, you should be able to get away, and there's some instructions in the README, uh, with just editing HTML and nothing else, and you should be fine. Just go through and where you want to show, like on the front page, whatever is important to you. If that's your metric, HIA 27, just put HIA 27 there and the text you want to show. For those tables, um, uh, basically put in, oh, for the tables, I wrote a little JavaScript snippet that you can run and it's commented out at the top of this report.html. Uh, I'm sorry, report.js. Top of the report.js. Um, a little snippet of code you can run. Let me. On your regular dashboard page. Uh, let's see, call host colon 8,000. So when you've got your whatever metrics you have loaded in, you can go to your JavaScript console on Firefox or whatever, or Chrome, and run this little bit and say you have a, a health subclass or subcategory. Just change this to health and run this, and it will give you the table contents all set up for that particular thing on your site. You just copy and paste all this into, you know, the area, scroll, 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 the area, this stuff on all these tables and just paste it right in there and then just, you know, prettify it. Hopefully whatever your editor you're using has an HTML pretty uh, plugin or something. Adam does. Uh, and then stick that right in there and you'll be good to go there. Cause that's really the bulk of the heavy lifting and that way you won't have to do that all by hand. All right, I think that is everything I wanted to share about the printing and the report stuff. So good luck and of course feedback is always welcome. It's still a work in progress right now. What I'm going to do is we're gonna have different kinds of charts and that way I will have in the code, uh, right now there's just a generic donut chart I'll have generic stuff for line charts and bar charts, and I'll just be chart dash line chart and chart dash bar chart, and then those will work too. And that'll be coming as soon as uh, the technical sub team on the dashboard team figures out what they want to see there. All right, have a good weekend. Bye bye.